Okay, so, yeah, we're making a lot of Habs content here because I've been kind of noticing over the past few days just how crazy the Canadians fan base has been on Instagram, on Twitter, everywhere on social media. It's all Canadians, 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 and with free agency coming up soon. We're going to be making a whole bunch of videos about trades, so why not get the big news out of the way first? Let's talk about the first overall pick the Montreal Canadiens drafted Yuri Slavkovsky at the 2022 NHL Entry Draft. Now, we've made videos reacting to the pick, and we reacted to second overall, and we reacted to Shane Wright dropping just a few days ago. By the way, that video is at over 25,000 views at the time of recording this audio, which is absolutely insane to me. But when it comes to the first overall pick himself, we kind of have to have a conversation as to what's going to happen now as the Canadians head into their development camp. Yuri Slavkovsky is a big dude, which is why I said we've got to get the big news out of the way first. And he was taken first overall by the Canadians in this year's draft. Let's go over the profile before we expand further. He is 18 years old, born March 30th, 2004. 6'4", 229 is a left-handed left-wing player. Now, on Elite Prospects, it does say he is signed for 2022-2023. That means that he has a contract with TPS Turku that extends beyond this season, and there will need to be some conversations happening between the parties involved as to whether or not Slavkovsky will go back over to Finland for next season, or if he'll stay in North America and play with the Canadians and start out on that team. But I wanted to go over what exactly it is, the impact that Slavkovsky could make should he make the Montreal Canadiens for 2022-2023. So we already know that Slavkovsky is a talented hockey player. We had seen that at various international tournaments at the Olympic Games, as well as the World Championships. The guy was an absolute Slovak monster, getting 10 goals in, what is that, 15 games internationally in the process? Now, sure, you could say, okay, the Olympic Games was not really the best version of the Olympic Games because there were no NHL players over there. The World Championships, you could argue, are the same type of thing. And Slavkovsky in his regular league play only had 10 points in 31 games for TPS in the Liga. Now, sure, he did produce a lot better in the postseason, getting seven points in 18 games over there. But you could also rebuttal and say that, hey, in the playoffs, they actually gave him an opportunity to play him in the middle bottom six of their lineup. And the coach, who doesn't speak his language, was actually able to go out there and say, OK, here, we'll give you a little bit of a bigger role, see what you can do. And he actually made the best out of that opportunity. Now, I don't think it would be too wrong to say that there was a lot of enigmatic qualities to Slavkovsky's draft season because of the deployment, because of how well he produced overseas and against men, but how poorly he produced against men in the Finnish league. There were a lot of draft comparable numbers and everything saying that Slavkovsky was the first, or excuse me, the worst top five pick since 2005 because the production level that he had in the Liga was not all too great. You gotta remember, even, like... Capo Caco produced a lot more than Slavkovsky did in the Liga before coming over. Even Jesperi Kotkaniemi had a much better draft season in this league comparatively, too. And so, for Slavkovsky, the numbers are not on his side when it comes to regular league play, but there are the extenuating tournaments and playoff sample that showed off that he actually does have some pretty good talent as well. Plus, it's the way that he plays that makes him so different from all the other first overall picks that we have had in the past few years as well. He is not a quick, shifty center like Connor McDavid or Jack Hughes. He is not an absolute sniper of a body center like Austin Matthews was. In fact, he's not even like a two-way force that Nico Hischier was. He is a power winger, through and through, a guy who can absolutely control shifts on the half boards, snipe it in when you give him the space, and a player that, if he pans out to his ceiling, he could be an absolute beast of a player. Like, think about Rick Nash for a second and kind of envision a player in that sort of mold. Now, Rick Nash had a Rocket Richard trophy to his name and was one of the better power forwards the NHL had ever seen up to that point, but... I do think that Slavkovsky has somewhat of a ceiling that lies in that sort of realm, maybe just a step below. It's just a matter of whether or not you're going to be able to find the consistent offensive production to justify that sort of label. Now, do I expect Yuri Slavkovsky to come out in 2022 and 2023, make the Canadiens, and all of a sudden win a Rocket Richard trophy? Of course not. But... At the very least, what we need to see out of this player in year one, assuming he makes the Montreal Canadiens in the first place, is complacency. He just has to be okay, in my opinion. 
nobody's going to go out there and expect him to win the Calder Trophy because, let's face it, only the guys that are actually like, you know, automatic game changers, top of the line, superstar caliber players have won that award immediately after getting drafted. McDavid Matthews comes to mind. But... For Slavkovsky, as long as this guy makes the team, he plays okay, he shows that he's able to keep up with the NHL pace and adjust to an NHL rink, I think the Canadiens fan base is going to have a lot to cheer about heading into the next few years. That is probably the two big things that I think that European players have to adjust to the most. It's the speed and it's the size. But for Slavkovsky, I have more reason to believe he'll have an okay time adjusting to that than not. Mostly because when it comes to his stride, Slavkovsky's skating is not bad by any means. He can definitely strut and stride his way through and build up some speed that way. And when it comes to the size limitations of the NHL rink, Slavkovsky himself is a big dude, so it's already kind of tough to shove him away from the puck now. It's just going to depend on how he adapts his playmaking, the way he sees the ice, and the way he maneuvers around the ice through open space. And I think that's going to be the more important part to how he adjusts to the NHL as well. And then, of course, you know Marty St. Louis is probably going to give Slavkovsky a lot of leeway when it comes to line mates, when it comes to opportunity. He might get some time on the power play, the second unit, who knows. But as long as you try to get a little foundation going there of Slavkovsky with Suzuki and Caulfield, maybe play them once every few shifts. Not all the time, because if it doesn't work right off the bat, you don't want to build and reinforce bad habits as their careers go on. But just kind of get a feel for who Slavkovsky excels the most with. If it doesn't work out all too well with Suzuki and Caulfield, see what he does with a Brendan Gallagher, see what he does when he plays with another big player in Kirby Dock, see how they're able to feed off of each other. There's a lot of opportunity here for potential, because Slavkovsky is a guy that if he does pan out, he can be an absolute superstar. It's just... The likelihood of him panning out is not guaranteed in the same way that Matthews or McDavid were. Heck, maybe this entire video was completely useless, because maybe tomorrow the Canadians just say, hey, let's send Slavkovsky back to TPS and he'll play another season. He'll go the Owen Power route and become the second first overall pick since Eric Johnson in 2006 or whenever the heck it was to not play in the NHL immediately after getting drafted. For Power, it worked out pretty well. For Slavkovsky, you could definitely debate that this guy probably could use a better opportunity in Finland, you know, just really dominate the TPS team, get the coach to say, okay, here, top six minutes, here you go. We're not going to hold you back anymore, Your I Go out there and do your thing. And maybe he produces at a crazy level as well. My only inclination is, is the status of him being first overall going to make the Canadians want to force him into the lineup already? Heck, if you tried to go the opposite route, let's say that Shane Wright went first overall and Slavkovsky went second to whichever team. Is that whichever team going to go out there and put Slavkovsky into their lineup right away? I could totally understand if whatever team that drafts Slavkovsky second in this hypothetical situation would decide, okay, we should probably send him back to TPS, allow him to dominate in Finland before coming over to North American Ice, maybe playing in the AHL a little bit, and then he'll start out in the National Hockey League. I feel like the first overall label carries so much weight to quote-unquote being able to play right away every single year that for Owen Power last year to break that mold and not go to the National Hockey League directly after college, I feel like it's a pretty big game changer, which all of a sudden opens the door to the possibility of the Canadians not playing Slavkovsky in the NHL right away either. But of course, that's a video for another day. If it does happen, we'll talk about it then. But from now and the foreseeable future, it kind of looks like Slavkovsky will just play in Montreal. But, of course, there's no real bearing to that. It's just an idea, gut feeling that I have. You can let me know in the comments like your thoughts about this idea as well. Slavkovsky, what is the plan for this guy? How good is he going to be in 2022-2023? Is it dependent on the league? Is he going to be alright if he plays in Montreal, but a lot better if he plays in Finland? Would you rather see that dominant superstar year in Finland? Should that even be the case of a possibility? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Montreal Canadiens first overall pick, Yuri Slavkovsky. I hope you enjoyed this footage of Rolls 99. And bye.